You are watching PR English Shorthand Dictations YouTube channel. This is English Shorthand Dictation number 390 and the dictation speed is 120 words per minute. Ready? Start. Honorable members of parliament, as I stand here today to greet you, my mind is filled with emotion and the recent past of India with its travail and struggle passes before my eyes. We meet in this sovereign parliament of the Republic of India and the high enterprise of serving our motherland and the millions of our people has been entrusted to us. That is an immense and sacred trust and as your president I approach it with humility and prayer. On this historic occasion our thoughts naturally turn to Mahatma Gandhi and our hearts pay homage to him. Let us accept our great task in the spirit of the father of the nation who brought us our freedom and let us always remember the message that he gave us, the message of unity and goodwill between all the people of India, of communal harmony, of the abolition of class distinctions and of those based on birth, caste or religion and the evolution of a peaceful cooperative India which gives opportunities of progress to all her citizens. It is the firm policy of my government to maintain peace and friendship with all the nations of the world and to help in every way possible in the maintenance of world peace. The Republic of India inherits no enmities or traditional rivalries with other nations and my government intends to continue a policy directed towards securing peace in the world and avoiding any alignment which leads to hostilities with any nation. India is a sovereign democratic republic, but she has decided to continue her association with the commonwealth of nations. That is a unique development, new to constitutional law and history. We thereby do not limit our freedom in any way, but we indicate our desire for continued friendship and cooperation with the group of nations represented in the Commonwealth. My Prime Minister recently attended the Conference of Commonwealth Foreign Ministers held in Colombo. That conference was an example of how independent nations can meet together and discuss in a friendly way the great problems that face the world and endeavor to find common ways of action without in any way infringing upon the independence and sovereignty of one another. Our relations with foreign powers are friendly and my government has exchanged diplomatic representation with a very large number of countries. Treaties of friendship have been concluded with Switzerland, a country with a great tradition of democratic freedom and with Afghanistan, with whom we have been bound by cultural and historical ties since the dawn of history. Negotiations have been proceeding for treaties of friendship and commerce with Iran, Nepal and the United States of America. As you are aware, India's Prime Minister visited this great country recently and his visit led to a greater understanding and respect and closer ties between India and the United States. My government has recently accorded de jure recognition to the new government of China and it is hoped that an exchange of diplomatic representatives will take place soon. With this great country, we have had friendship and cultural contacts for more than 2000 years. I trust that those friendly contacts will be maintained and will help in preserving the peace of Asia and the world. With the nations of Europe, America and Australasia, India is developing friendly contacts. It is natural that India should be even more interested in Asia, of which she is a part, as well as in Africa. Her primary interest is 
in the freedom of peoples and in the removal of all barriers that come in the way of the full development of nations and peoples she is entirely opposed to the continuation of colonial rule in any shape or form as well as to any kind of racial discrimination in asia freedom is on the march at the same time there is trouble and turmoil in some parts of it i earnestly trust that out of this turmoil will emerge peace and freedom and cooperative relations between all the countries of asia a historic event took place recently in the establishment of the free and independent united states of indonesia we have welcomed this more particularly because of the very close relations both in the past and in the present between the people of india and the people of indonesia it has been an honor and privilege for us to welcome the president of the united states of indonesia and to convey to him and to his people our greetings and good wishes india has large numbers of her children living in countries abroad notably in africa in fiji in the west indies in the island of mauritius and elsewhere our advice to them has always been that they should identify themselves with the indigenous people and look upon the country of adoption as their real home i regret to say that our relations with our neighbor country pakistan are not as good as they should be and there are several matters in dispute between us our history and culture as well as the immutable facts of geography compel both india and pakistan to live in friendly cooperation with each other but the grievous wound caused by recent events will take some time to heal it is my government's policy to endeavor to help in every way this process of healing in pursuance of this policy my government has proposed to the government of pakistan that both the governments should make a solemn declaration for the avoidance of war as a method for the settlement of any disputes between them and to resort to negotiation mediation arbitration or reference to some international tribunal in order to settle such disputes i trust that the pakistan government will accept this offer in the spirit in which it has been made and thus help to reduce the unfortunate tension that has existed between the two countries